Today you get two for one. Kind of a special sale today. Not really a sale, but you get two knives in one video. All right. It, it sounded funnier in my head. So we've got the mini Claymore from Benchmade. So I'll give you the part numbers here really quick if you want. Um, we've got this one in black handle and this one in OD green. About a year or so ago, I did videos on the Claymore, the bigger brother of these. And I'm going to link my Benchmade playlist down below um, or up in the corner. These are automatics, as you can tell by the big, obnoxious safeties. Like, uh, why do we need a safety on an automatic? especially on this one. So I've had these for a little bit and uh, have been able to carry it and really try to accidentally fire it in my pocket. And it just doesn't happen. Like I have not been able to make it fire even with it in my pocket and pushing on it and trying to get it to fire. It just doesn't. Um, if we look closely at it, the button is kind of protruding a little bit here, right? But it really needs to get down to there to fire, which is way below. So if we take a straight edge here, that is way below that cut out. It just, it just, it's not going to accidentally fire in your pocket. I don't know. Maybe if you've got a bunch of stuff in your pocket, like I have my car keys and stuff there just to kind of simulate, but I couldn't make it accidentally fire. So has it ever happened in the history of these? Sure. Maybe. So I can't say that it would never happen but I could not make it happen. I love the kind of uh, stonewashing finish, stonewash. It's not really textured, it's smooth, but it looks textured. Right here, you have Morse code for FTE, front towards enemy. On a Claymore mine, if you remember back in any action movie you've seen, where they've got the Claymores, it says front towards enemy so that the soldiers knew which way to aim the damn thing because a claymore basically has a bunch of steel ball bearings inside and it explodes and boom, all the shrapnel goes out that way. So you're safe behind it. So they put that as kind of the nod to the explosive device, which I think is cool, fun little Easter egg, if you will. Got the same blade here. These are just the same knife in two different colors, but yet at two different prices, which I think is odd to me. I'm not sure why that is, but in black on the Wild About Sporting Goods website, here is his contact information. This was loaned in by Gil, and you use 10% off if you buy anything from their website. In black is $207 before any discounts. OD Green is $234. That's on Gil's website. I did not go and look at the Benchmade website, but Gil usually just marks them all up the same amount. So if they are the same price, they would have been the same price on Gil's website. Also, he's not trying to make an extra couple of bucks just because it's OD Green in his mind. You know what I mean? That's a Benchmade thing. All right, let's talk about the specs a little bit. Four and one eighth closed. Seven and an eighth open with a three inch blade. Funny how the math works out that way, right? Um, 0 0.014 behind the edge. The blade thickness is 0 0.10. This is really a thin. This is not going to be a real hard use knife. And we talked about hard use the other night on the EDC hour. And I'll put a link to our live stream channel also in the corner where we tried to discuss and, and determine what hard use means, but you gotta go watch that video. 
uh, to find out the answers to that because we didn't really have a good answer, but there was a lot of good comments of what people thought hard use was. So I, that was a great fun episode. Uh, these are both in D2 blade steel, weighs in at 2.5 ounces, 0.5 inches overall, minus the clip. Nice deep carry clip. The clip is a little bit of a hot spot. It's not bad, but you notice the clip. I don't know if it's really a hot spot per se, or just something you kind of notice, more so than on a lot of clips. You're always going to notice the clip on pretty much any knife. If I pick up this custom Hellraiser, yes, you notice there's a clip there, but because the clip is really long on this one, it just kind of fills your hand and feels like it's supposed to be there. It kind of fills that little swell in the palm of your hand, right? This clip is so short, it, it just becomes a little awkward there because it starts to fill the swell, but not all the way. So you feel where it ends. It's a little odd, a little funky. Um, fire button, or the safety, it does lock it in the open position. It's not a fixed blade. Okay, it doesn't make it that strong. It just really blocks, I don't know if we can even see it. Yeah, let me zoom in. I think you can kind of see what the fire, the safety does. Maybe it'll show better on the green one. And it's gonna show the same, but. So if you can see in there, you'll see that bar move forward. All it's doing is holding the lock bar or the button, the button lock, the fire button slash button lock from engaging. So yeah, you could put the safety on when you have it open as a little bit of a, you know, reminder. Like if you're doing some work, you don't accidentally push the button. I guess that's a thing. I don't know. Does anybody own this? These are new for 2023. It was about a year-ish ago that I did the full-size Claymore. And I'll link to the Benchmade playlist. It's not that I don't like automatics. I can appreciate them. I just don't love them. I don't want to own any, really. I mean, I own a couple, but you can't really use them. I mean, you can use them one-handed. I've had a lot of people tell me and, and correct me when I say they're not really one-handed knives, but they're kind of not. It's a little awkward, as you can see me trying to close it here, without dropping it, without accidentally releasing it so the blade flies open again. Just because I don't love automatics doesn't mean I can't appreciate them. Okay, let's do a couple of quick size comparisons. Um, I appreciate the automatics. I really like the G&G &G Hawk deadlock that was in for 0 0.02 seconds in the latest John Wick 4 movie. Um, and if I was going to own an automatic, an OTF for sure, it would kind of be a deadlock. That's what I have kind of wanted at some point. That was the spider Codelica since I pulled out the Hellraiser. Um, yeah, the deadlock is super cool. Automatic. There's no blade play, nothing like that. It's out the front. The thing is solid. It's awesome. So I can appreciate the automatics even though I don't own any, nor do I want to own any. And it's not just because I live in California. Even if I lived in another state where automatics were legal, which I think having an automatic be illegal is stupid because that opens just as fast. And this is totally legal. So I don't understand the rule, but... Even if I didn't have that rule, I don't know that I'd be an automatic fanboy either. I'd own a few because sure, why not? And I do own a couple. Here is my Red Horse Knife Works automatic Hellraiser. Um, this was more to support my friend Ed, the owner maker at Red Horse Knife Works, because he came out with one. I figured, well, I should own one because I am 
a Hellraiser fanboy for sure. So I got the automatic. So it's not that I don't like them or would not own any. It's just not something I carry very often, regardless of regulations. So anyway, let me know what you think about this mini Claymore. I think it's pretty cool. I do like it. I don't know why we need a safety on it. I kind of wish the clip was maybe a little longer. It would make it less awkward in the hand. And I wish Benchmade would use countersunk hardware on the pocket clips because that's just odd to me. And uh, yeah, I just kind of pet peeve kind of irritates me that sometimes we'll get hung up on your jeans as it goes in and out of your pocket. Let me know your thoughts. I would greatly appreciate it. And check out my uh, Benchmade playlist over here and my EDC hour um, channel over here.